He has, but he's he got it. redemption. You want to draw little steppies on your hand? Yeah, yeah. let me do that. Let me do this. Yes. Oh. But wait, wait. The, I'm confused. The escalator wouldn't would, wouldn't act as a ship, which is transporting Jim, you. Do you want is me it? to tell you again? <laughs> <laughs> You're Dr. Anthony Kaka. <laughs> <laughs> so the escalator pulls you along by compressing the space in front of you, expanding the space behind you. You don't move at all. You're just sitting there on the escalator, minding your own business, being skyrocketing to the stars. So if someone from the north and if someone from the south were both attempting to do this at the same at the time. same time. Well, you may have a collision then. <laughs> to, to get to a planet. Mm -hmm. um, to pull a planet, let's just say. And if you're pulling a planet wouldn't you be pulling everything behind it? So if, if you're pulling a planet towards you, aren't you going to be pulling the guy waiting on the other side of the planet who also wants to pull the planet towards him? How do things not get ripped apart? Uh, well, yeah, you got to be careful. I mean, you don't want to get too close to another starship that wants to go to the same destination at the same time. But I should point out that the main drawback of this is the fuel. The fuel requires something called negative matter or negative energy. And uh, if you watch the program Lost, uh, that's also what drives the Lost program. All the bizarre machinations of time in, in that are due to a negative matter meteorite of some sort that landed on the island and moved the island. Mm -hmm. So this is a very rare substance, negative matter, negative energy. We've created some of it in the laboratory. On Star Trek, they call it dilithium crystals. Yes. Dilithium crystals make everything work. In physics, we give it a different name, negative matter and negative energy. Hmm. Do you know what uh, loss is all about, like what they're trying to do there? Uh, somewhat. Because everyone has their theories on the Internet. I mean, what do you think the whole show is about? Well, Popular Mechanics actually asked me to write several essays explaining the science behind loss, if there is any. Mm -hmm. There's cool. one episode where this elderly woman uh, goes to a pendulum and begins to explain the whole thing that the the island is special. There's something on the island that allows them to create a tunnel network to other points, and that's how they're able to move the island, and by going through the tunnel, they're able to go to different points in space. That something on the island is probably a negative matter meteorite. Probably a meteorite that's landed into the island. Negative matter allows you to create gateways, gateways to other points in space and time, and that's what drives the entire series. That's why you have these bizarre things happening when people go backwards in time and yeah. meet themselves and stuff like that. Hmm. He's got to figure it out. Yeah, I he think. does. That's why I block my ears. Because yeah. <laughs> like, I'm still, I'm still in, the, uh, I'm in the beginning of season five. Oh, what a great show. Uh, Only a theoretical physicist could figure yeah, that out. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I want to ask about ghosts. Okay. What, do you believe in ghosts? Um, no, but at the turn of the century, many people believe that ghosts lived in a higher dimension. If you are looking down on a tabletop and there are two-dimensional people living on a tabletop like Cookie, Cookie Man, you would have the power cookie of a man. ghost. <laughs> you got to use the term I love Cookie Man. Man. Cookie <laughs> Man to Cookie Man. <laughs> <laughs> and you know this is all going to be part of a promo sometime. In the future. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yes. All right. So we're looking down, two-dimensional. You we would have the power of a ghost. You'd be able to walk through walls. You'd be able to disappear, reappear by simply hopping over any partition on the tabletop. You could do anything that a ghost could do. So a hundred years ago in England, many theologians said that ghosts live in a higher dimension. That's where they probably are. Now, since then, we kind of forgot the idea of higher dimensions, but now we're bringing it back in terms of string theory. In fact, at the Large Hadron Collider, opening up this summer, the largest machine of science, we hope to open up particles from the 11th dimension. So this is really hot stuff now. We think that the Big Bang took place in a higher dimension, and uh, these higher dimensions are not science fiction. Ghosts don't live there. Strings live there. So, like, how would you have explained that? Like, you're talking, again, you're talking to complete laymen, so you explain it very <laughs> well. Layman, that's... Yeah, exactly. I'm a cookie nice. man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cookie man here. Yeah, cookie man. He, he really did have to resort to, like, 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 because he probably is, like, thinking, all right, these idiots probably like cookies with faces on them. <laughs> and he's right, we do. They're delicious. And they're fun to look at. Um, 
How would you have explained that? He's, he's looking at his watch. He's like, I've had enough of these boobs. <laughs> Idiots. How would you have explained that to say if you were talking to another theoretical physicist and he had asked you that? How would you? Because you wouldn't say that to him. How would you? Have no, said we, that? we'd use it mathematically. We use a shorthand shop talk. So when two physicists get together, you wouldn't understand a word we say. So how, everything, how, oh, everything is, is a bunch of short shorthand for equations. So how, how, would you equations. Say, how would you say that to me if I was another physicist? Like you say, I was listening for a second. I'm just curious as to what that level of conversation is, which I know is. Well, we have something called M theory, uh, membrane theory, in which we have all the mathematics of 11 dimensions, and we look for classical solutions of these things, and then compare it with the the data from the Large Hadron Collider. So this is coming very soon. Like I said, this summer we're going to be comparing the data from the Large Hadron Collider with the predictions from string theory and M theory, and this can send shockwaves around the world that we have quote read the mind of God. What is the M theory mathematically? Is that too long to say? Uh, yeah, it's the theory of membranes that vibrate in eleven-dimensional hyperspace. Oh shit! Sure. <laughs> oh no, I kind of I, I, I knew that, but I was asking for the audience. <laughs> <laughs> here's here's two physicists talking. <laughs> What? I don't understand a word he's saying. I think we got to get him out of here. I, uh, when did you finish the 12th grade? When did I finish the 12th grade? Um, on time. <laughs> Wait, not you, soon? Weren't, you weren't one of these, I'm six years old and I'm already in college, guys? <laughs> no, I, I really didn't want to do that because I saw some people do that. They were kind of immature. And the danger is that you accelerate so much that your immaturity comes out mm -hmm. and that it really retards your social integration. People think of you as being weird and you're, you're shunned by your peers. You lead a lonely life. We had one of those in my high school. He was like 12. He was like six years ahead. What's your guilty pleasure? Enough with this. Uh, this. Yeah, it's a good question. What do you like to do when you're not being a brain? Something that isn't very, something you wouldn't think somebody of uh, your, you know, intelligence uh, would ill. enjoy. He knows well, what a guilty pleasure is. When I was a kid, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to start explaining it like Cookie Man. <laughs> well, you know, a no pleasure, reason. but with guilt. <laughs> well. When I was a kid, I used to watch Flash Gordon on TV, you know, and George Lucas, too. You know, if you watch Star Wars, it's a clone of Flash oh, Gordon. Yeah. So even today, I get a thrill watching all these science fiction movies. I mean, I groan when they get the facts wrong, you know, when they have rocket ships going, you, 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 you in space. Yes. There's no air in space. Smoke rockets is coming out the not, back. <laughs> rockets do not bank in outer space. Rock, uh, jets bank because there's air, but rockets zigzag in outer space. But, you know, I get a guilty pleasure because, hey, you know, the special effects are neat, mm -hmm. right? You get to see a glimpse of one man's conception of the future. So, uh, yeah, I've, I've seen them all. I've seen all the science fiction movies. Very different than Jimmy's guilty pleasure. Uh, Jimmy? It's kind of like the same thing, <laughs> yeah. except, except with, with myself, I would probably say... That, that men in dresses don't zigzag in space. <laughs> yeah. well, I, I see the good doctor all the time. I don't want to get the wrong impression of no. myself. I'm a gentleman. Yes. Um, all right. Well, the so, are, so are the people you're with. <laughs> That's not true at all. I happen to like girls. Sometimes yes. we all make mistakes. <laughs> um, <laughs> the book is. Uh, I actually have the book, and it's great. It, it's like you're, you're reading. Is it easy to read? It really is. There's parts of it, like the uh, other pictures. Uh, yes, there are. <laughs> and, um, and there's Beyond uh, Einstein's a good book, and this one is uh, uh, Physics of the Impossible, a scientific exploration into the world of uh, in the world of phasers, force fields, teleportation, and time travel. It's in paperback. There's been some updates, so if you have it, there's actually updates to the hardcover. And it's like it's really cool to read this stuff because it's like there's once in a while he does get into the math of it, and like there's certain things he's explaining, you know, M equals, you know, you know, pound sign hat, and you're like, all right, I'm out, I'm out, but. With that stuff, you just kind of glance over because I'll, I will never be able to <laughs> grasp that. But when you, you walk through the other stuff, it is actually a, 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 a com you can comprehend what you're reading, yeah, which that's is important. amazing. Yeah, that's very important. And it's a lot of pop culture stuff, which mm -hmm. is good because yeah. a lot of people are interested in that and uh, the workings of uh, things like, like phasers and uh, lightsabers yeah. and whatnot. And like I said, it hit number 10 on the bestseller list, so somebody's buying the book. Nice. <laughs> For yeah. a book on theoretical physics to hit number uh -huh. 10 on the bestseller list. That's cool. I mean, I mean, it's not quite as good as four, but I mean, it's still very <laughs> impressive. Um, you can well. count. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Great sense of humor. No, I, I, I was I hit number four, but it was a long time ago. Jimmy, you got the plug sheet. And, yes, and I the do. TV show? Uh, yeah, the TV show. Well, first, the website is uh, mkaku.org. This this is how you spell it: M K A K U. If, if you just Google Michio Kaku, you'll find him online. There's all these great talks you give explaining. Uh, 
uh, uh, you know, the, the planetary uh, zero, one, two, three planetary types and all this stuff. And uh, it's Psy Q Sundays, 8 to 11 on the Science Channel. Um, and that was when your show is? When does your show start? Uh, well, this, the book itself will be serialized this November. Okay. So 12 episodes on the Science Channel. Uh, e each episode, ray guns, force fuels, uh, time travel, warp drive. That sounds good. And you work here I'll in New York. That. You are a, uh, you work at NYU. Uh, City University of New York. That's right. And you are, what are you? Are? Uh, Henry C. Matt, Professor of Theoretical Physics is the official title. So is there anybody higher than you at, in physics at the school? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> that really was at that the, level. Wait. That was the only moment of disgust I saw coming out of that. <laughs> wait, no. There are no. actual students that have to take your Oh, class. yeah, he's a, he's oh. a professor. Oh, oh, professor. Oh. 